welcome back to part four of our series on basically exporting different Excel objects to different applications, but using a user form this time. In our last video, we really started getting into the bulk of adding functionality to our user form. So this was actually doing things like grabbing the current selection, setting up the export by parsing certain strings, and then we kind of went into the whole process of copying the object, selecting it, and then now we're kind of at this point where we're handling the outcome of the actual pasting. So first making sure that the application does exist and then pasting it to the specified object. So this is the final video to wrap things up. Previously, we had finished with Word, and so with this one, um, what we did is we created a new instance, specified our, all of our variables, we added a document, we specified the first paragraph, and then we handle the paste type, so whether it's linked or not linked. Um, very important to keep in mind, this is assuming that they don't have one already opened, so technically you would have to write this a little bit differently depending on if you wanted to use the active instance. So with that being said though, let's now handle the PowerPoint component. So first thing we'll do is declare object variables related to PowerPoint. And so what we'll do is dim um, PPT app as the PowerPoint.application object. We will do PPT pres as PowerPoint dot presentation object and then PPT slide as PowerPoint dot slide object. And then from here it's going to look very similar to Word. We're going to create a new instance of not Word, PowerPoint. And so we'll set our PPT app equal to a new PowerPoint dot application. Again, we want to make sure we can see it. So we're going to set that visible property equal to true. All right. Then from here, we will add a new presentation. And then we'll set that PPT pres object equal to PPT app dot presentations. And then we'll add a new one. And then we'll add a new slide. And so what we'll do is we'll set PPT slide equal to PPT pres. We'll go into the slides collection. We'll call the add method one. And then in this case, I want a PP, no, not that, layout blank. Now keep in mind too, it's not add slide, it's add. That always pops up. I never know why. We can pretty much take this one again. It's, it's kind of the same. It's not exact, but it's pretty close. <clears throat> so what we'll do is we'll take our PPT slide. We'll go into the shapes collection, paste special, and then this one would be PPP OLE object. And then paste special with this one would be, again, not a linked object. So linked is not specified. What you could also do too, if you were just paranoid and you say, oh, I really wanna make sure, then set link equal to false. Okay, so let's do this too. Technically, <laughs> technically there's no other options on the dropdown, but I guess if I wanted to be overly cautious, um, what I could do is I could say case else, you know, for example, um, maybe I want it to be a text box where they, they actually, um, what is it? Um, they type out that particular, um, you know, application, or let's just say, for example, they never selected anything. Um, what would we do? Well, in this case, I want to display a message box saying, Hey, you never selected anything and I'm not going to run the script unless you select something. So, you know, else let them know they need to select an application for the script to work. And so what we'll do is we'll do a message box. We'll do a prompt, colon equal. 
you did not select an office application to export to. Please select an office application. And then what I'll do is I'll have my buttons equal, what is it, VB information. And then I'll have my title equal uh, no app selected, no, no app application selected. Again, this is just thinking ahead a little bit, trying to you know see if they maybe don't select something. Technically, you should have probably done that with the uh, object selection too, if you were kind of being a little bit cautious. It, it's really up to you kind of how you want to approach that but sometimes it's better to be safer than sorry, you know, kind of things like that. But with that being said though, that actually is everything. So we're gonna try it out and we're gonna pray to God it works. I'm hoping it works. <laughs> All right, so first things first is I will specify a chart and then I will specify that I want it to PowerPoint. No! <laughs> hmm. Oh, I see what I did. I misspelled it. Never fun. It's always something. It's always, always something. I'm sure there will be another one. Okay. Object required. <laughs> you know. It's like anything. You just accept it's never going to work. I'm sure there's going to be another one now. Let me do a chart. Oh, it worked the second time, hopefully. Oh, look at that. So far, so good. Okay, I'm liking this. Um, Let's do table one, but this time we'll do it to Word. Word's a little bit different. Okay, so that's cool. So that one worked too. I'll do it again to Word, but this time I want to do a linked one because I want to make sure the linked functionality works as well. I'm hoping it works. Yay, it's a linked object. All right, so it looks like our user form is good to go. It's working, it's exporting, and it's pasting the way we want it to be, uh, you know, pasting. So, you know, this is something simple, nothing super complicated. I mean, I'm not going to say it's going to automate a bunch of your workflow, but, you know, in this particular uh, use case, it does show you how you can build a user form that, you know, adds a little bit more functionality that might not be currently enabled inside of Excel or PowerPoint or whatever it is, um, but still, you know, build it in a way where, you know, you can add some cool functionality to it. This point, though, you know, if you have any questions about kind of what we've done with this user form or anything along that line, um, you know, please feel free to leave some comments down below. And then also, if you could, please make sure to like the video. We always appreciate the support. And if you're not already, please make sure to subscribe to the channel so that way you get regular updates as we release new videos. So thank you again for watching, everybody. We'll see you in our next user form series where we're going to work with some SQL queries, which is always fun. And then also make sure to put this code on GitHub. See you next time.